Hi everybody, this is our second video looking at pulses. We're going to look at a very focused examination looking for peripheral vascular disease in the lower limbs. So this is a problem where you've got vasoconstriction, um, disease of the arteries, usually through smoking, high cholesterol, it's an aging process. Okay, so I'm going to treat this again like an OSCE station. Um, so I'm going to first of all introduce myself. Hi, my name is Dr. David, I'm your doctor today. Is it okay if you examine your lower limbs for okay. your pulses? Yeah. Thank you. What's your name, by the way? Nice to meet you. And what's your, your date of birth? 28th May 1998. Fantastic. Okay. And Abdul Khan has already exposed himself and obviously you want to expose the, the abdomen and the chest and the, and the lower limbs as well. You really want to get your clothes um, above the knees so you can check the popliteal properly. So the, the first thing I'm going to do is wash my hands. After getting consent, I'm going to just wash my hands, demonstrate that, maintain privacy and a chaperone if I need one. And now I'm ready to start. I'm so going to start with a general inspection before looking at a more specific inspection of the, of the lower limbs. So I'm going to just check, first of all, does Abdullah smoke? Um, I'm looking for any nicotine staining, whether it's right-handed or left-handed. Um, and, and also you might just get a general feel whether it's dusky or any cyanosis. Another major cause for prevascular disease is hypercholesterolemia. So I might just look around his eyes to look for xanothalsma, um, if there's any lipid deposits around the, the eyes. And then I'm going to look more specifically at the lower limbs. So we're going to look first of all for colour changes. Is there any sign of blue discoloration or cyanosis? Is there any brown um, hemiceridian deposits, particularly over the venous system? Is there any black colour of gangrene? Um, and that might be wet gangrene or dry gangrene. Um, and then we might look specifically for um, changes in the nail beds with vascular disease, you might get nail changes, just looking on both, both sides. With beginnings of vascular disease, you often lose the hair around the foot. Um, is the skin shiny? Is it red, erythematous, edematous? Also looking for ulcers. Um, so we're looking first of all for venous ulcers, which follow the saphenous distribution of the vein coming down the leg on the medial side. Now I know my teaching, I think I've told you the wrong thing on the lateral side, but venous ulcers are on the medial aspect, on the gaiter. The gaiter is a kind of sock that you wear, so the gaiter distribution. And venous ulcers are usually big, superficial, and have irregular borders. So usually bigger than arterial ulcers, um, irregular borders, and not as deep. For arterial ulcers, I'm going to check specifically between the toes. Are there any ulcers between the toes? Underneath the leg, I'm going to lift up the leg because often you miss this area. Is there any sign of any ulceration here? And on the lateral aspect, opposite to what I've taught you uh, the last few weeks, so on the lateral aspect. Because this area gets less blood supply from the arteries. So that's why you make more prone to arterial ulceration here. These ulcers tend to be smaller, have regular margins, and are like punch-like lesions, go deeper through the tissues. So looking for ulcers. The other thing I'm going to look for is scars. Now I start from the chest with someone with vascular disease, has he had a bypass operation? Or has he had a, a triple A repair in the midline? Has he got a midline scar of an abdominal aortic aneurysm repair? You may also get small scars along uh, varicose veins or even a, a high tie. Um, so just look for scars as well. And that's a general inspection and that's a more specific inspection over. Now I'm going to use my hands. The first thing I'm going to check for is temperature changes. So I'm going to use the back of my hands and I'm going to start distal to more proximal. So I'm going to first of all fill both sides. Is there any more warmer or colder side of the leg? Um, so if I've got maybe a, a problem with the right leg, this leg might be colder, so I'm just checking the, the warmth of the legs. Start distal to more proximal. The second thing I'm going to do is check for the capillary refill time. Remember this should be two to three, se two to three seconds long. I may just press on the, the big toe, the nail bed, or just below it to the side of it. So I'm going to press down for a little while, and I'm going to look at it. Does it go pink back to its normal colour within two to three seconds? So say we have a problem with a prolonged capillary refill time. Maybe it's more than uh, four seconds, five seconds, 
as you think there may be some insufficiency in the leg. We're going to move on to the Burgess test. Remember, Burgess test. So what we're going to do first of all is lift up the leg at 30 degrees um, for 30 to 60 seconds. And what we're looking at is looking at the colour of the toes particularly. You may go further along the leg and see whether it goes from more of a pink colour to a white colour. So I'm going to lift up the leg. Are you okay now, Abdullah? Lift up the leg to about 30 degrees and I'm looking at particularly the tips of his toes and may go into the leg for 30 to 60 seconds. That's quite a long time. If you're struggling to hold somebody's leg, maybe as muscular as our Abdullah is, you might just give you a little bit of support you know, in a different way. But again, just keep looking at the toes. That's maybe just 10, 15 seconds. So if there's no colour change at 30 degrees, then you may go up to 60 degrees. So you go up to further, maybe 60 degrees about here. And again, just looking. If it's more milder disease, it's going to be at a higher angle. Again, 30 to 60 seconds. It's quite a long time. Some books say two minutes. Okay. And then just relax again. So you might do that on the other side if that's the side that's affected. So after the Burgess test, now we're ready to start checking the pulses. So we're going to start with the aorta and work our way down. So we're going to ask the daughter if we can get you flat again. So just bring it down. Okay. And remember, we're looking at the midline for the abdominal aorta. Relax the muscles again by asking the patient to put his arms by his side and cross his legs if his legs are crossed. Deep breath in. Breathe out. I'm going to put my hands flat on his abdomen. Again, going quite deeply. Remember the aorta is posterior, so you have to go quite deep. Easier on a thin subject than a more obese subject. And again, you put your fingers parallel, maybe just two, three centimeters apart, and you feel the pulsation again to the edge of your fingers. Again, you're looking for the, the width, what's the diameter of the aorta. Now we move down to the femoral pulses. Remember your landmarks. It's midway between the anterior superior index spine and the pubic tubercle, in the mid inguinal point, and the groin crease, so about there. Again, in the exam, just explain where you're feeling. I don't expect you to expose the patient in the exam. In reality, in life, obviously do that. And then check on the other side too. And you check on for, is it present? Or is it weak or absent? Particularly peripheral vascular disease, at what level is the problem? Another thing you might want to just add in at the point of checking the femoral is also checking for radial femoral delay. Again, thinking about coarctation of the aorta. Again, on the ipsilateral, on the same side of each other. So checking the radial and then the femoral together. And then checking the femoral with the radial on the same side, and they together. Is there any radial femoral delay? Before moving on to the popliteal pulse. I'm going to move on to the popliteal pulse. I'm going to ask Abdullah to mind just to bend his, his knee for me about 30 to 45 degrees. Put my thumbs over the anterior aspect of the tibia. Link my fingers together around the back, just below the skin crease, and go deeply, push deeply, as you're pushing the artery against the posterior aspect of the tibia. On one side and the other side. So just lift this up again, Abdullah, thank you. And push him deeply. Again, just checking for the presence, the strength, um, or if it's absent. So if you've got an absent popliteal, you're going to have absent um, dorsalis pedis and posterior tibialis. If you've got a present popliteal, then you're going to check now for your foot pulses. So you're going to check first of all for the dorsalis pedis, which is two thirds on the way up to the ankle, um, just lateral to the extensor hallucis longus. Check both sides. Is it present, weak, or absent? Now I'm going to check the posterior tibialis, just behind the medial malleolus. Again, check both sides. Again, is it present, weak, or absent? If you're not sure, let's just go for one at a time. You're going to use the three fingers together, the pads of your fingers. So that's all your pulse checks. Maybe you found a, a problem in the right leg, there's an absent dorsalis pedis or a weak posterior tibialis. Then you're going to think about sensation. Um, so you're going to check for sensation. So I'm just going to bring you up slightly, Abdullah. Okay. So 
I've done it. I'm going to ask you which leg am I touching? And you can reply to me the right foot or the right leg versus the left foot or the left leg. So just explain to the patient what you're going to do. I've done it. Would you mind just closing your eyes? Okay. Tell me which foot am I touching? Left. Okay. Right. Left. Left. Right. Okay. What I'm also checking actually is not just can you feel both legs, but at what level does the sensation come back to normal? So someone with peripheral vascular disease may not have any feeling from the midfoot downwards or from the ankle downwards. So you're just checking what level. So I've done it. Tell me when do you feel the, the cotton? Do you feel it all the time? All the time. All the time. So the patient may say to you, uh, I start feeling it there, midfoot because they've lost the, the very distal sensation. Remember when testing sensation not to move the, the thumb in a big exaggerated way because then you're checking two different sensations, proprioception as well as touch. So do light touch um, as best you can. So we've done all the palpation. Don't forget we can also use our ears, we can auscultate. So we're going to just check for brewies. So first of all, I'm going to check for femoral brewy and then popliteal brewy. So use the, the bell over the stethoscope, over the femoral pulse, again in the inguinal um, groin crease, midline, midpoint, on both sides. And then I'm just going to check also the popliteal, there's only popliteal brewies, and then narrowing of the artery here, again on both sides. And that's it, that's auscultation. And that's everything to do with the checking for peripheral vascular disease in the lower limbs. I hope you found that helpful. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you.